Welcome back, humor consumers, to the Life Happens Laugh Anyway podcast. I'm comedian Tracy DeGraff. And I'm Catherine. She's my best friend. Yeah, we're ready to go. Do you know my sister asked me, why doesn't Catherine say her last name on the podcast? Uh, (laughs) I did think about that at one point. And you know what I told her? I told my sister, I said, well, I say both of my names because I'm not like Cher or Madonna or, you know. But I am. (laughs) I said, maybe. (laughs) Maybe it's just Catherine, the bestie. (laughs) And I, 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 that's a good question, Kelly. Yeah, yeah, she wants to know, even though she knows your last name. Are you I, like? Do you want to share no. your last name? I mean, I can't. I could say it right now, but it, it's not like it's a secret. It? I just it's shipman. <laughs> <laughs> Ship, as in like the boat, right. not. You don't want to get your P's and T's mixed up. Right, right, right. Well, Mm -hmm. okay. So I don't know why that just came to me right there out of the gate, but there it is. (laughs) That's for you, Kelly, if you're listening. Thanks for for listening. And by the way, speaking of listeners, we have sponsors. We do. Yes. Oh, our Muffin and Pooh, Mm -hmm. who we just prayed for. We did. And you got a little weepy. I did get a little weepy. And it reminded me of, so the reason that we prayed is because my husband had just texted right before we began our sound check slash prayer. Right. And he just had something about work that he was upset about. So then you prayed for him. And then it made, it reminded me that what our podcast is actually about today, it feels a little bit like uh, insignificant. Maybe. I think what Catherine is is feeling, and this is what I was feeling too, her husband has a very big job with a lot of really, I, I would call it heavy responsibility. Yeah. You know, he's responsible for a lot of people. Yeah. Which is huge. Mm-hmm. As well as if he makes mistakes, it's costly in terms of money for the company that right. he works for. So he has a heavy load of responsibility. And our topic today is... Meal planning. Right? <laughs> and why is it so mundane and like a chore? Why does that, it suck? That's literally, yeah. Yeah. And then we With, felt guilty right. because this is our little job and we're going, wham, 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 See, meal planning. You know what? That's the Holy Spirit speaking to us. It is. And funny because right when the text came in, my computer goes ding even if my phone is on silent and i thought to myself darn it yeah. you know i don't know how to change it right well i haven't tried real hard but but then again that was a a good, a good thing we, we because... decided i think it was the last time we recorded that if we hear a ding we're just gonna say i got an idea yeah <laughs> ding i got an idea it's a bright one yeah all right all that to say That our topic today is meal planning and our title for this episode, which, by the way, we have officially hit the double digits. This is episode 10. That's right. Praise the Lord. Yes. So the title is Meal Planning Doesn't Have to Suck. Sponsored by Muffin and Pooh, Mm -hmm. our husbands. Yeah. Kenny and Ron. Right. Well, it goes the other way. Ron is Pooh. I mean, Ron. (laughs) Whoops. (laughs) Ron is Muffin. Don't call him that. No, oh gosh. Ron is Muffin. Kenny is Pooh. Uh-huh. All right. Well, let's uh, let's go on, Catherine, with mm-hmm. our what we have planned for our listeners today. By the way, thank you for listening. We're we're so appreciative. If you have tuned in before, please continue to do so because we're growing something here. We're growing a little community. It's like a yeah. little petri dish. Yeah, like a little seed yeah that's been watered yeah and if you're new to us we welcome you and Catherine and i are so happy to have you along we're we're best friends who just do life together that's Mm -hmm. what we do yes we're very happy to have listeners all right so let's talk about meal planning and the funny thing that struck me about this because we we brainstormed what topics would our listeners potentially be interested in and both of us thought meal planning that sounds good because it's a task it's a chore very much so and we all need to eat we do every one of us and our families need to eat or people you know just everybody needs to eat whether you have a family or not (laughs) yeah and i was doing research for this episode and i thought to myself i've been married for almost 32 years i've been making meals for a very long time Mm -hmm. and i'm still struggling with meal planning (laughs) Oh, no. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. If I didn't have to make for other people, I would be so satisfied with peanut butter and jelly and popcorn at least twice a week. 
Well, why can't that be part of your plan? I guess <laughs> I didn't think about it. I never think that way because I would feel guilty. You oh, know that. That's true. Yeah. Oh. All right. So we we recognize that even though we have been at this for decades, we can all still use a little support. So we're hopeful that that's where whoever's listening, we're hopeful that you're encouraged by that. If you've been at this meal preparation game for a while, but you still don't feel like you have it figured out, you are not alone. Definitely not alone. So Catherine, no. I'm curious about when you were a brand new wife mm. slash mother, mm -hmm. did you have any big failures in the kitchen? Definitely. Okay, and so the one share. that sticks out the most, we still joke about to this day. It was almost 30 years ago. And Kenny and I were newly married. We didn't have any kids at all yet. And we had our, 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 you know, our own home. And I said that I was going to make a meal for uh, both Kenny and I and I think just his brother, Dennis. Okay. So we invite Dennis over. And I had never made this particular, whatever it was, it required a clove of garlic. Okay. So I thought the bulb <laughs> was the clove. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh yeah so i'm following mm, that's the recipe you know and i put the whole bulb in because it said clove well it was a garlic clove okay to me. wait 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 yes now when you say the whole thing it was it did it have like that papery outside on it so you peeled oh, it i peeled it you sure. peeled that whole thing mm -hmm. and got down to the maybe 20 cloves or whatever <laughs> and you 20. put them put them all in did Okay. And, and I thought, gee, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what what did it taste like? It well, it, well garlicky. <laughs> it was so strong. And so funny too, because Dennis, Kenny's brother Dennis, he is a particular eater mm. anyway. Mm -hmm. And he actually showed so much grace, I can recall. I mean, because he, he just doesn't hold anything back, especially with family. And he'll, you know, he'll say, I don't like mushrooms or, you know, <laughs> right. he'll just Whatever blurt it, it out. Is. I don't recall him saying anything other than we all three of us were like, whoa, this, <laughs> this is strong. My stomach started to hurt oh, even before we weren't even finished eating. And I was like, oh, my stomach hurts. <laughs> But on on a side note, in a good way, you probably didn't have any vampire issues, right? right? You're probably like, well, we're vampire slayers oh, now. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I think we just recently joked about that. Mm. But that was my big fail, you could say. So that was before kids and everything. Oh, yeah. You were just... And back mm -hmm. then, we didn't have all of the technology no, that we have today. That. Right. Like today, young cooks, young, you know, men and women who are just getting at it, they could Google and see the step by step. Sure. And if you didn't know what a clove was, right. I mean, you could just Google a picture of it, right. you know, or duck, duck, go it. Oh, right. But anyway, yes, I got a bulb mixed up with a clove. <laughs> Well, that's a common mistake. I'm sure that you think? I'm sure I'm um, well, I remember one time being in the produce section and I was looking for an eggplant. I didn't know I was going to make eggplant parmesan. Oh, yum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea <clears throat> which of the hundreds, maybe a thousand vegetables that were this was at a huge, you know, big supermarket. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And uh, they had a produce manager there. I went up to him and I said, is this an eggplant? It was an avocado. <laughs> so, you know, if you don't know, you don't know. And yeah. so sometimes you just have to ask those questions. Hey, at least you were in the right department. Like you were in produce and That's not true. in dairy looking for an egg. Like, <laughs> does hey, an egg credit. grow from a plant? <laughs> oh, gosh. It wasn't that goofy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another fail that I thought I would share with our listeners is one of my most epic failures in the kitchen and that was a Christmas Eve many years ago but we we did have two children at the time and they were very young so our first two children are only 14 months apart I was preparing the Christmas Eve dinner for my husband's family oh, his mom was coming on. oh my goodness this was the first time and it's so funny because his mom my husband's mother is the 
most excellent cook. It's almost like she has a gene in her that just knows, you know, like how to make things taste amazing. But at the same time, she has never given me any kind of pressure in terms of Mm -hmm. my own skills. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I put all the pressure on myself. Mm -hmm. But here I am, a, a fairly new wife, fairly new mother, preparing Christmas Eve for the very first time. And Martha Stewart was popular back then. Mm. The TV show. Uh Uh-oh. My mom used to watch it. More pressure. Yeah. So I had this Martha Stewart standard. And this is pre-prison, Martha. Mm -hmm. This is before (laughs) Martha had her big fall. And I didn't meet it because I was caring for two young children who were not cooperating. And my husband was at work that whole day. Mm-hmm. He came home. I was in tears. The boys were in tears. The The house was a disaster. And the food was only half cooked. Like the fr- the chicken was still frozen. They were on their way. They were going to be at our house like in an hour. Mm-hmm. And I was so crushed. Like my expectations. I came in so low to where my expectation bar was. Mm-hmm. And my husband, to his credit, thank you so much, Muffin, he took the baby who now now that baby is 29 years old Mm -hmm. luke and luke was a crier yeah cried all day cried all night Mm. he took that baby and settled him down we picked up all the junk in the house put it in garbage bags and threw it in the basement (laughs) yeah (laughs) i mean everything Uh it didn't matter what it was you know it was legos and banana peels and whatever it's Mm. all going in there and we called pizza hut we ordered pizza. Oh, wow. And we That's had the amazing. best time. Yeah. Everybody came and I told them what happened. And I, I had really, I was really emotional and upset about it. But my husband was like, let's just focus on the reason that we're here. Let's focus on Jesus. Shout out for Muffin. How about it? Wow. Yeah. Good job, Muffin. Yeah. And so then for several years after that, until the kids got a little bit older, we just said, forget all this fancy stuff. Let's just order pizza. Pizza Hut's open. Let's just order. I don't think that would fly on uh, our family, well, but that, and that's okay too. And it know? could be, it could be that um, some people wouldn't like that, or they might get mm-hmm. their nose out of joint because of it. But I think for me, it it's it was a reminder that you don't have to do things, you don't have to make it harder. Mm-hmm. You know, you can choose an easier path, and you can. and yeah, so that. That was helpful to me. And that story is in your book, right? It is. Yeah. Uh, thank you for reminding yeah. me and our listeners. Right. Your uh, Left Anyway Mom That's right. Book. Yeah. And so if you'd like to pick up a copy of my book, you can get it mm-hmm. just uh, on Amazon. Or you can get it at my website, tracydegraff.com. And we put links to that in the show notes so you can grab a copy of it. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's transition into what it was like for both of us growing up. Like, did you have formal training in the kitchen? What do you think? <laughs> uh, no, no. Knowing your background? No. Okay. No, definitely not. The only, I think I recall my mom um, wanting to show me how to bake, you know, like bake cookies. Okay. Well, I didn't, I had zero interest. I didn't like any sweets anyway. I didn't like cookies. I didn't like cake. So making it, to me, wasn't going to be any fun. I'd rather go outside and play yeah, or, you know, do something else. So, but, and I also recall my mom, you know, she just, it was, we just had real basic Mm -hmm. meals. My mom is English. So uh, we just had the easiest, simplest, you know, like steak Mm -hmm. and um, that she would do right there on the cooktop. Right, right. Canopies. (laughs) (laughs) I hate canned vegetables, I'm just saying. Yeah. And, um, you know, for dessert, she'd say, well, I have a can of peaches and here's some cream to put over it. Mm-hmm. And that's very English English as well, or custard or whatever it was. And I didn't like that either. So, um, and my mom, I think, she, you know, she really wanted to not really have help in the kitchen. I don't, not in that way anyway. She'd just rather get it done. So. Well, I'm, I'm sure that you... And other moms, I know I'm feeling this way, so I'm guessing that you as a mom and other moms might feel this way too. It's easier sometimes just to do it yourself yeah. than it is to show someone else how to do something because it takes longer. That's true. Yeah. 
So, so that's you, the background right. for me. Okay, so there was no formal family training. No. And in my case as well, my mother was a working mom. And so she yeah. got home, you know, in the late afternoon, and then it was time to throw something together. Mm-hmm. And my mom was an excellent cook. But she also had, I guess, whatever it is, that magical gene that I, I don't have. <laughs> but my sister, I, my, my sister is one year older than me. And my sister also just gravitated toward figuring out the whole cooking thing. Yeah, in a natural kind of way. She, oh, my gosh. My boys love when she cooks. Mm-hmm. Anyway, shout out to Kelly yeah. for the cooking. <laughs> I haven't actually had her like meals, but I've definitely had her um, sweets and things that she has baked. Oh, she, and the jelly, that pepper jelly. Yeah, you, you should taste her cheesecake. Oh, it's divine. Yeah, shout out to my sister too. Yeah, she, she does makes the, absolutely she does. famous cheesecakes. Right, thank God we have them. Yeah, <laughs> have to cook or bake. Okay, that is my point exactly. My point is, if you're growing up in a family where you don't have to do something, maybe you're not going to become proficient at it. So let's give ourselves permission to learn, you know, to grow. We also talked about, before we started recording, we, ta- we talked a little bit about home ec. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah, that's right. home ec, I think the ec part of that was for economy. Like mm-hmm. how, yeah. how yes. so they were going to teach us how to you know, balance a checkbook, which that, look how far that got us. We don't even have checkbooks anymore. Well, we did for half of our Yeah, but you know, I never worried life. about it. <laughs> okay, well, I did. <laughs> okay, well, so. yeah, there's home ec, but foods was separate. Well, not for me. For, okay. for me, it was all combined together. It was, you're going to learn how to manage life after high school, you know, how, how a house is mm-hmm. managed. And we, I remember learning how to make a souffle. Oh, like, oh who, yeah, I remember that too. D- yeah. oh. Who's going to... Anyway. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. We yeah. didn't get a lot of formal training in the area of meal planning. We just didn't. Yeah. All right. Now, why... Here's our, here's our next little question. Mm-hmm. Why is this such a challenge? Why do you think meal planning is such a challenge for us? You know, I think at different seasons, there's different challenges. So when um, I was first married, there was a challenge of, I didn't know anything, <laughs> you know, so there's that. And then when the kids are small, there there could be, for some people, you know, you might have um, picky little kids. Mm, Who knows? So there's challenges there. And I think a huge challenge in when you're, you know, rearing up a family is time because a lot of times you're running back and forth between uh, kids activities Mm -hmm. perhaps work as well so that's that's the challenge at that stage in life right and um i think and now we're still battling this we're in our 50s and it's still a challenge well now i find the challenge to be and i think a lot of people do is you're fed up you're fed up with making meals and um boring yeah it's mundane then there's you know you make the same things i hear this from a lot of other um moms and even um people who might not have a family they're just tired of making the same thing and i think too now that um now that we have the the pandemic or the quarantine there's that added layer of um difficulty you can't go to your favorite restaurants anymore Mm-hmm. Um, well, now we're starting to open up a little bit, but it's still not the way it was. Well, a lot so, of people cooked from home during COVID. Right. So now what? You're right. <laughs> and now there's there's that. And there's the grocery shopping. There's, um, oh, my goodness, there's so many reasons. What do I have here? Um, oh, the, the, oh, my goodness, too. And then the perishables, they go bad so fast if you don't cook it right away. Um there's just a lot of reasons why. Yeah, it's- and the perishables, your produce and so forth, if you don't have a plan, like I, I have pretty much shot from the hip all this time. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't say that I've, I don't even know how I would describe my meal planning um, skill. <laughs> I would say it's not really there. Because you do sometimes, though. I do. Don't plan. Well, what I do is I just think what, what, what can I make that they will eat? Because I do have yeah. I do have the picky factor here. 
So I have that. And then you have to juggle amounts because our family went from huge to now it's getting smaller, which I'm grateful for. Mm-hmm. Not that they're like gone, gone, but they're moved out. Mm-hmm. Um, What was I going to say about that, though? Well, I know that another thing that is, you know, I think kind of a, a challenge is mm-hmm. like, oh, then there, then you have dishes. You have pots the and pans. The whole thing it is a it's process. Just, it's just, like I said earlier, if it were just me, I would just have a sandwich. Full of cereal. <laughs> and put it on a napkin. Mm-hmm. I don't even want to use a plate, you yeah. know, because I don't want the dishes. Well, see, so, I don't even, think, my opinion is I don't think there's anything wrong with having sandwich night. And fend for yourself. If your people are not expecting mother's milk, I mean, <laughs> you can make a sandwich. Well, and have the things available in the kitchen. I, I I get it. I know that in many cases, you you know, mom may feel like you know this is my responsibility. This is part of my contribution to this family. Yeah. But I want to allow permission to, if you want to plan a sandwich night into your meal plan, let's say you're, let's say you're coming up with a meal plan for a month. Let's say it's four weeks of a meal plan. Mm -hmm. If you pick one or two of those slots for the whole month and you say, we're going to have sandwich night Mm -hmm. and it's part of your plan, then it doesn't feel like you're letting the ball drop. You're planning it. Mm -hmm. You're saying, we're going to do sandwich night and maybe pick during, look at your schedule. And if you're going to be really busy during a particular time of the month, or if it is that time of the month for you, mom, I mean, I'm done with that, but in the event that, and you just don't want to be bothered with additional stress, make sandwich night part of your plan. And, and kind of, I would say like, cheer it up. Like it's all in the marketing. It's all how you, it's all, it's all how you present it. You're definitely good with that. Guess what? I'm going to, this is what we're going to do. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to have a sandwich night. And then, and then you as mom and grocery getter, you make sure that you have all their favorite meats and cheeses, their favorite peanut butter and jelly. You are selling it. I'm telling (laughs) you, I am telling you that there's somebody listening right now who is like, she is singing my song. Mm -hmm. And then what do they call those wooden trays that they put all the fancy... Oh, char... Charosserie or something? No. It's French. Yeah. You've seen... (laughs) Charcotrousse or something like that. Bless you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So you're going to plan once a month or twice a month or once a week if you want to, whatever you want to do. night. To make it simple for you and make it fun. This is what this whole episode is about. How to make meal planning not suck. Mm, Yep. Right? Right. Nobody's going to die from eating a sandwich instead of eating a meal that took you five hours to think about and grocery shop for and prepare and then clean up after. Do you ever feel pressured when somebody posts on Facebook this awesome meal that they made? Do you ever feel like... Gosh, <laughs> that, that, I should do that. Does that add pressure, do you think? It does. And that's our, our tendency to compare yeah. and judge and assess. Yeah. And so we got to knock that out of the mm-hmm. park, too, because that's not going to do you any good. Out you go. Yeah. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you hit the nail on the head earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, I I do like to have a meal. I don't work outside of the home, so... I do like to have a meal ready for my husband, mm-hmm. for my poo, when he gets <laughs> when he comes home. And he likes and he, it too. He, you know, he, he appreciates does. it. He does. He's never put pressure on me. Um, he's never said I want to have a meal when I come home. Although there was, <laughs> uh oh, there was a time, kind of recent. It was like a couple months ago. You and I were walking. Remember? I do remember that. We were Tracy and I were walking in the hood. <laughs> And it was about dinner time, Mish. And Kenny comes home from work and he sees us and he shouts out the window, Hey, where's my dinner? Something similar to that. And I was tossed <laughs> Remember that? You're like, uh, no. I, I, I actually don't think I was able to let it go at first. I thought he's never said anything before. All of a sudden, <laughs> he's, he's got something. ideas. Yeah. And so hmm. I brought it up to him later. And he's like, oh, you know, I'm just joking. You usually always have meals. And I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> But, but yeah, yeah I, I do like to have something for him and not just him, but 
the girls too. My girls are older now. My son has moved out, but, uh, I don't know. I just have, I just feel this, this need to do that. Well, it's part of and, the, the mothering gig. It's part of that nurturing, yeah. um, motherhood thing. It, I, I think I learned something from our, who moved my cheese, um, podcast that we did. If, if you haven't listened to that one, um, find it. Yeah, our... it's not really about cheese. No, it, even well, though we're talking about food. <laughs> well, the reason, the reason that I that that came into my mind is because it's just being willing to think outside of the box, being willing to think outside of what you're you're doing from day to day. Yeah. And if you need permission to make meal planning easier, figure that out. There is a solution to it. There, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And you know, leftovers are a great thing. I I do know that some people yeah. don't like leftovers, and or you can only do leftovers in some cases once, maybe twice, is stretching it. Yeah. But uh, you know, I I I definitely think a sandwich night is is really really good. I mean, to do you know take and we do that here and there. BLTs, easy peasy, mm-hmm. usually. But um, yeah, definitely leftovers if you have that option. When when we had a full house of children, I used to do cereal night a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just did. I was sur- surviving. I was not yeah. thriving. I was surviving. Mm-hmm. So I would just be like, oh, guess what, kids? We're having cereal tonight. <laughs> It's in you, the cabinet. You get to pick. <laughs> Which one do you want? You could have a different color bowl tonight. <laughs> Yay. Um, one of the one of the mottos that I used to have in my in my kitchen too when we when we had all those kids around was something that I learned from somebody else. I didn't make this up, but I drew it on a chalkboard and it said kitchen motto. Everybody oh. fed nobody did yes i love that that so is funny. such a good kitchen motto was that from camp daniel yeah yeah it was from camp daniel I so. when i served um it's a ministry that Catherine and i have both volunteered with and um, i was serving in the kitchen and we were preparing meals for hundreds of people mm-hmm. and the trish was the kitchen manager yeah. And she said, hey, our, our goal here is just everybody fed, nobody dead. OK, so we just got to make sure we get out the meat thermometer, not kill anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, so the bottom line of that. And I guess this is something important to say to our listeners is to lower your expectations so that you can meet them. I say that all the time yeah, when I do. get in front of women and I do my comedy act or I do um, speaking at churches Women, sometimes we set our expectations way too high for ourselves. Yeah. And then we're constantly frustrated because we're coming in lower than that. Sliding in. Yeah. Yeah, And that's not the way that we're meant to be. Yeah. We're not meant to be like that. All right. Well, let's share some tips, Catherine, and some ways to make meal planning easy and fun. Yeah. What, what you got over there so on your ways notebook? To, to make it easier, definitely plan ahead. Mm. Surely that you can carve out some time to plan ahead. Mm-hmm. And um, so also, too, when you plan ahead, of course, you have to shop, right? You have to, you might want to check your recipe book or, or whatever the case might be. Um, but, you know, if you can cut corners, especially now, now that the quarantine has happened, there's more than ever, more now than ever, shopping services like mm-hmm. Instacart or it. Shipped or, you know, you name it. Um, and the big box stores like Meyer and Walmart, they have uh, those services. Yeah, yeah, they have those services and they're no extra fee and you're not allowed to tip a lot of them. So, well, some of them have a small fee. Some of them like do. Instacart is two bucks. Yeah, I'm for sorry. I meant yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. But um, a lot of the big box stores, it's just you a, know. a convenience service. Yeah, right. So that that is one aid. Um, you know, you can purchase the pre-cut vegetables and um, onions, and you know, like I those know. kinds of things. Yeah, that's you know, something. that's and I, I'm going to say this because I always had this guilt of buying them pre-cut anything. Because I just feel like one should be very frugal. So when you're being frugal, you can't justify the fact that you're paying more for something that's already pre-cut, whether it's fruit, 
vegetables, onions, garlic, mm-hmm. whatever the case may be. <laughs> Stay away from the garlic, Catherine. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, well, at least then a clove is a clove. Right. <laughs> but any- I love how, by the way, on the little... Um, minced garlic jars it tells you on the little side there one teaspoon is equivalent to right uh, one clove or whatever it is um but anyway but you have to get over that as far as um, get over the guilt get of over the getting guilt. the pre-cut things yeah it took me forever i would say decades i'm sure that there over. are people listening who feel the same way you know oh, that sure. they feel like this is my responsibility this is to save money this is to do this or to that and all of those voices in your head. Yeah. I mean, when you consider the time that it's uh, pulling you away from either enjoying meal time, you, you should be enjoying your meal uh, if you can at the table with your family, your friends, whatever the case might be, mm-hmm. your guests. Um, it shouldn't be a stressful thing to get ready for it either. You right. not only enjoy the meal, but also enjoy you can enjoy the process so plus another thing to notate is that if you're like me and you haven't done much meal planning in the past i think that if i start to plan the meals i will ultimately save money because i won't be throwing away things that's true that I had an intention for, I thought, oh, this looks oh good in the goodness. grocery store, but then I never get around to it. Yes. I just rolled my eyes when she said that. I can't she tell did. you how many times I bought, you know, fresh perishables. Yeah. And out they perish <laughs> because <laughs> because I didn't get to it. Yeah. I didn't plan even properly. With, even with canned food that is considered an... <laughs> Well, I just I just cleaned out my pantry yesterday, yeah. and I found a can of artichoke hearts. Oh, I have those, and I Staple. love I love this dip that my mother in law makes with artichoke hearts and mayonnaise and something else, spinach. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, I never got around to it. The can expired in 2019. Mm. We're we're in 2021. Yeah, and <laughs> I'm like, okay, I, I don't think I can open this and eat it. So I had to throw it away. Uh-huh. So that's what I mean is that even though it's not a perishable piece of produce, I bought the can thinking, I'm going to make this someday. You know? But if I had a plan, I would have used it. Yeah. Right. Anyway. That's very true. Uh, another way is to, this is part of the planning ahead to cut and chop when as soon as you bring it home, if you can. I know when you've been out shopping, or especially if you did the shopping yourself and didn't use one of those surface services, if you're out you're shopping, exhausted. <laughs> yeah, and you're bringing in the groceries, <laughs> even if you have an attached garage, right. it's just putting it all away, throwing out the old so you can make room for oh, the gosh. new. I'm tired just talking about it. And then to wash the vegetables or fruit yeah. and then chop it and all that. But if you do it, it's there and you're way more likely and your family is way more likely to grab it and use it, right? Yeah. Um, or ask your celly. I learned what a celly is from Tracy. <laughs> a celly. It's your cellmate yeah. for prison. Yeah. But in COVID, right. in quarantine, it's whoever your family yeah, members. Your family members. Ask ask them to help you. To help you. Yeah. Surely they can figure out how to chop celery. And carrots and uh, right. onions. I, you know, I should always ask someone else to help me with onions all the time. You're right. Because my eyes react, like, more than they should. And plus, that's another thing that Catherine and I have both been talking about on, the reg- on a regular basis. We struggle with asking for help oftentimes. Mm-hmm. I think that's something that women struggle with a lot. Yeah, because we think we can do it faster do it or all. better. And right. we don't, yeah. We don't need help. And probably men struggle with that too. And then we also struggle with saying no to things. Mm-hmm. We, we talked about that. But just asking for help. And one thing that I think of that came to my mind, so I'm going to blurt it out even if you, you might have this on your list. But I think that it's helpful when you come home from the grocery store, if you purchase a whole bunch of ground beef, Mm-hmm. Go ahead yeah. and brown it right yep. away that same day. Mm-hmm. Brown it and then freeze it already browned. Right. That way you can make, think of all the meals that you can make with ground beef if and it's quick, cooked. Right. You know, you can oh. quickly put together spaghetti, yep. tacos, right? Yeah. Chili. 
Yes. Those are three right off the bat. Some mm-hmm. sort of casserole. Definitely. Hamburger helper. Yeah. Tater I mean, tot casserole. So we could go on and on, right? Yeah. So I would. Lasagna. I, I would say <laughs> that could be part of your, your meal plan mm-hmm. is that you're going to plan to every week purchase or every month or however frequently you go to the grocery store, you're going to purchase a certain amount of ground beef that is going to be able to give you at least three or four meals. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as you get home, you're going to go ahead and brown it. Yeah. And then put it in little containers or whatever in the freezer. So then when when you're busy and you don't have time, you just pull it out. And you're, right. you're good to go. That's exactly one of the things I was going to say, too. Also, the same thing with, with chicken. Cook up the chicken and, uh, you know, put it in the refrigerator or freeze some of it, mm-hmm. you know. And it's funny. It just popped into my head. Over the weekend, a bunch of us gals, we were just talking about how convenient those rotisserie chickens are that are pre-cooked at most grocery stores. And then, of course, all the big box ones like yeah. Walmart and Meyer and... Um, and uh, and it's so good, and you can use it in so many recipes. So that's another, and it's so inexpensive too. That's that's the other thing. Yeah, you almost can't do it yourself for that. It's that's what the we same were t- price basically. Right. That's what we were talking about. I should have thought of that as soon as we were discussing it to write it down in my notes. Well, for, see, it came up by the yeah, Holy Spirit. Right, right. Um, oh. Here's another thing to mm-hmm. make it easier. Grill, grill, grill. <laughs> you don't have dishes. You just, you know, you, throw don't, it even, on the grill. you yeah. don't even have to marinate all the time. You just throw it on the grill. That's mm-hmm. that's super easy. Another thing I thought about, too, was my son had talked us into getting his dad, my husband, um, a smoker for Christmas. So I said, hey, <laughs> you know, my, Kent Pooh is not really a... Griller. griller type guy yeah i mean not not really but anyway so my thought was i am gonna make him excited about having a smoker <laughs> <laughs> now look who's talking about selling it Catherine. Know, you blame me but here you go All right so i feel like kind of like a cheerleader for the you you're a good smoker <laughs> kenny Woo! look at you smoking you, you're blowing smoke for sure <laughs> But that's that was the last one because it's kind of a funny one, but it's also true. Yeah. So we'll see. Th- this is oh. encouraging to me, like mm-hmm. listening to you talk and even the things that I that are coming into my mind. It's encouraging me that even though we may not have had a formal plan for thirty years, we have done meal planning, even if it's oh, on the yeah. fly. So our encouragement to ourselves as well as to listeners is to come up with whatever your plan is. Make it easy mm-hmm. and make it fun. Make it fun. Make I it forgot fun. two things, too. Of course, we all know the crock pot. I love the crock oh, pot. Oh, my goodness. That makes it so easy. The crock pot and always have your staples. For example, I, I kind of joked when I wrote this down, water chestnuts. Remember, we, we, remember we, I used to say, do you have any water chestnuts? Yeah. And, um, it's kind of a staple in a way. I know that, you know, one, oh, there goes my... I have an idea. <laughs> water chestnuts. It's Catherine's phone. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the computer. But um, also, too, I think it is so, uh, such a good idea to have those really odd spices that you barely ever use, like anise. You know, I don't even know what that is, but yeah, it, sometimes recipes, when you want to try something different, it'll call for a certain spice you don't have normally. I think if you have those on hand... You're more likely to use them? Yeah. Well, I think that you have to be intentional. You know, like if you're going to go and buy a spice that is specific yeah. to a recipe, put it in your plan and make it. Because otherwise, if you just stock up on random specialized spices i know for me it would be like the can of the artichokes it would would (laughs) die in my spice cabinet i guess i should clarify i mean more like if you're in in a experimental season where you're trying different things and you know you're going to be trying different things there's going to be those things that are on hand that you might not necessarily have to run to the store for you know or you can borrow one that that you and I both fell in love with is that farm dust. Oh yeah, this right. this yeah. stuff you can get it online. Mm-hmm. We we found it at I don't know some like little shop. It was almost like a little specialty shop. It and was it like had, a German Amish. Yeah, yeah they had some place. really cool things in there, Farmers. and it was called farm dust 
mm-hmm. seasoning. I think if you just Google it or duck it or whatever you call it, <laughs> just put it in farm. You got to make sure you said that. I duck know, it I real know, clearly. I know, I know, I know, whatever. <laughs> Farm dust, all one word, seasoning. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like a basic um, combination of whatever seasonings that, like, people that know stuff about seasonings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you can put it on anything. Yeah. It's delicious. Yeah. It's, I would recommend that. Yeah, it's very good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. A- anything else to make it easy or fun? Oh, uh, no. Not that I, I mean, there are definitely the, the, go on and on really but those are the basics okay i'm going to share this this one thing so in research for this podcast or for this episode i was looking at what the experts out there have done mm. and you know they the, all these youtubers and stuff and they share all these tips of how to make meal planning simplified in five easy steps and oh, yeah. stuff like that mm-hmm. well one of one of the things that many of these youtubers suggested was to make a list of all the meals that you love to cook your family loves to eat and you know already basically how to make it you mm-hmm. might you might have to double check a few amounts of ingredients or whatever but you pretty much you you could possibly just put this meal together without even opening up a cookbook yeah and they said you should be able to have like 25 or one of them said, list your, your top 25. And I'm like, 25? I think I have five or seven. <laughs> <laughs> top 25. Wow. So here are, I did come up with 25 things that I, I ran out when it when I got to about seven or eight. I just was like, well, now I can't think. What do I make? And then I Googled like common meals. Cheerios, Fruit Loops. <laughs> Brand flakes. <laughs> it's nutritious tonight, okay. guys. It's Wheaties. Be 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 quiet. <laughs> Here here's my here's my twenty five things that I came up with. Number one is tacos. Yeah. I oh you make the best. Tacos. I do. I do. do like my tacos, mm-hmm. and they're from our little small town, DP Illinois. Shout out to my peeps. We know how to make tacos. Yeah. And yeah. they're delicious. And you can make them ahead and freeze them. And then all you have to do is thaw them out and then fry them. Because mm. we deep fry them. They're very unhealthy. But they're com- comfort oh, they're food. so good. Okay, so tacos. That's number one. Number two, I put spaghetti. Yeah. Everybody can make spaghetti. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I realized how many beef recipes I have once I looked at this. Mm. I had 10 out of the 25 recipes were all beef. Mm. And as a cancer survivor, my nutritionist that I worked with yeah. in my recovery, she suggested that I only eat beef once a month. Once a month. I remember that. You could, I bet, you can substitute a lot of that with ground turkey. That's, or ground, yeah. yeah. That, that was exactly what I went back. Once I looked at this list, I'm like, wow, I have got to at least try to cut down the beef. I don't know if beef... I don't know if it's good for you or if it's not good for you, but that's what my nutritionist suggested. So I'm trying to follow that. So anyway, you could you could replace um, for ground turkey or chicken. Yeah, and maybe do even if even if you just had to do half and half, mm-hmm. so that you're not totally yep. one or the other. Yeah. Okay, another one is Italian beef. I love making mm. that. Crockpot pizza. Your cousin yes. Christy turned me onto that, and yep. that's such, and crockpot meals are so easy. Baked chicken breasts. I found mm-hmm. a recipe on allrecipes.com for baked chicken breasts yeah. during the during the pandemic, and oh, we loved it. Mm-hmm. Uh, tuna steak. I love oh, yeah. tuna steak, and that's a really uh, healthy protein. You can purchase tuna steaks through Aldi. Mm-hmm. You can get them um, frozen, and they're individually wrapped. So that you can pull them right out of the freezer and they thaw in minutes Mm -hmm. in water. Like if you just put them under running water or put them in a bowl. Yeah, because they're vacuum sealed. They're in a package. Yeah. And I don't don't know why they thaw so quickly, but yeah, it takes other things a longer time to thaw. Mm -hmm. It must have something to do with the fleshiness of it or whatever. But a tuna steak. There's no fat in it. Maybe that's it. There's no fat. And it doesn't taste anything like tuna. In case you've never tried tuna steak, it's not like tuna fish in a can. Totally. Two, that's two, those are two opposite things. And the way that you prepare it is just so simple. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just going to cover it with like a healthy oil, like a olive oil or mm-hmm. grapeseed oil, salt and pepper or farm dust. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then all you do is cook it on top of the stove. Uh, to just a few minutes each side and 
It's delicious. It is. You just have to trust me. Try it. Slappy Joe's was number seven. Number eight, meatloaf. Number nine, beef stroganoff. Number 10, chicken pot pie. Oh, I, yeah. I do love that. Number 11 was chili. And pork chops and stuffing. I don't make it very often, but I did put it on here because I do like it. Mm-hmm. 13 was what you had last night, ham. Oh, yeah. 14 was a turkey, like a turkey breast, or if you want to do the whole roasted turkey. I do enjoy a good turkey dinner. Turkey breast is so easy, and you can do it in a crock pot. Mm -hmm. 15 was chicken fajitas. Oh, yum. Yeah. And then 16 was a whole roasted chicken, but definitely from the deli. Just put it in your cart. It's five or six bucks. Mm -hmm. Done. Mm -hmm. 17 was kielbasa. The kielbasa oh, meal I that, love that yeah Catherine yeah. um Catherine taught me how to make that and it's so good. 18 was salmon, just any kind of salmon, and mm. that cedar plank salmon. Oh my goodness! That you can get at Aldi yes. occasionally. We had it for the first time with our friends, the Tatties, and yep. uh, Dale oh Tatie goodness. made it for us. Oh my gosh, it was so good. Yeah. All right, 19 was scallops. I love scallops. Yes. Mm-hmm. And my husband and I, um, we purchased a lava stone uh, around the holidays because we were sick and tired of COVID and doing everything by ourselves. I'm like, we have to have more fun around here. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I actually have that on my list. Oh, do you? Yeah. The lava stone thing. You yeah. should You should try it with your family. You yeah. can borrow it. Yeah. Anyway, it's a lava stone. You you um, put it in your oven for like 40 to 50 minutes or something like that at the highest temperature your oven goes, and then you can cook at your table. Mm-hmm. I did a whole video. It's on my YouTube channel of um, us cooking Christmas Eve on our lava stone. We made fillets. Yeah. But you can do scallops on it too. Then I have uh, fish tacos oh, just yum. because it's my fave. Mm-hmm. Lasagna. Meatball subs. Meatball subs are oh. so easy. Gosh, I never, ever make that. It's so easy. You know, right here in our little town of Piatone, Illinois, up at Burkott's, the local grocery store, and maybe if you don't live in Piatone, you're, maybe your local grocery store has meatballs. They make The meat department makes up their own meatballs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I bought them. I did buy them, even though I don't normally yeah. make subs. Yeah. But you know what? They were better. If they were as good as or better than what I could put together myself. Mm. So I'm like, okay, done. Yeah. And all you have to do is heat them up. They're already, you know, done for you. Okay. And then I put ham and cheese sliders because oh, the boys like that. Yeah, you make those real good. Too, they are. Maybe. But you got to do those infrequently because they're very fattening. Mm. <laughs> There's yeah. lots of butter. Um, chicken noodle soup and then baked chicken tenders. So this, So that's a list of 25 meals Mm -hmm. that I could possibly put these together without even really looking at a recipe or Mm -hmm. maybe just kind of confirming a few you know amounts of ingredients and then you just rotate them yeah you just rotate them yeah that's yeah that's a good list there um so I have one recipe (laughs) that it's my go-to if um you know, if I have to make something quick, Mm -hmm. I usually have these items on hand. They're like staples in the house. Or if um, there's somebody in need who needs a meal Mm -hmm. and I'm pinched for time, I can whip this up. It's got substance to it. It has nutrition and, uh, you know, the stuff that's not so nutritious you could pick out, but in most... (laughs) Like what? The cheese? The cheese. (laughs) It's covered in cheese. Pick it out. (laughs) Yeah. So it's, um, I was actually going to do this last, but since you have that, um, it's chicken divan and my friend Debbie gave me this recipe years Mm. ago. And, uh, anyway, it's, it's a winner in our house. So it's just cubed chicken. The chicken does have to be cooked ahead of time. Or if you have time, just cook it, you know, beforehand, uh, you need cream of mushroom, cream of chicken. Um, and then of course, you know, milk or water to mix with that soupy stuff. And you can either have fresh broccoli or frozen, but it does have to be defrosted. Cheddar cheese, ground pepper to taste. And you just basically, you mix up the soup, you pour it over the the uh, cut up chicken, and then you put the broccoli on top of that, and then you sprinkle, or rather, and then you put the soup mix over that, actually. Wait, so, so it goes so the chicken, chicken it goes then the broccoli? Chicken, then the broccoli, then you pour the soup over that, sprinkle the cheese over that, and at some point, you know, mix the pepper in there. See, I just do it so naturally that mm-hmm. I don't even, it's just so rote. Uh, and you just throw it in the oven, you know, at 350 for about 20 minutes. 
and sounds good done and like i said most of the stuff i usually have on hand even the chicken you know and if you we said earlier cook up the chicken ahead of time Mm -hmm. or even get one of those rotisserie chickens tear it apart and just put the i love that yeah it's so easy sounds great Mm -hmm. we should try that Mm, very easy i wish i could get my family to eat broccoli my boys my husband will but my boys they they just put their nose up at all that yeah that's a thing Mm -hmm. they'll grow up someday (laughs) well and then we were going to talk about how do you make it fun? Yeah. Like, how do you make, uh, actually, uh, another way to to make dinner, and not only to eat it, but to make dinner more fun, right? Right. So it could be, like you mentioned, it could be a family affair or, f- or friends, whoever you're eating with, your guests, and do the thing, like the cooking stone, the um, yeah. lava stone, yeah. and do it right there at the table. It's kind of a novelty. It's kind of like, you know... That's exactly why we purchased the lava stone because we we needed to make our Christmas Eve special because mm-hmm. we couldn't get together with our extended family because of COVID. Mm-hmm. And it was fun. And our son Adam in the video, he was quite he was quite serious about cooking his own steak. Oh, I have no doubt. <laughs> and his turned out I'll go the be a best. professional. <laughs> he, he he was it, his turned out really well. Yeah, uh, all of them did. But yeah. Uh, and kind of like in that same vein, years ago, we bought our, or I bought a fondue set mm. for the family. Mm-hmm. And it was the kind that you could um, plug it in, you know, electric, but mm-hmm. you could also do it with just like the little burner thing. And you make your meal, the whole family, you know, has something that they can put into the fondue pot. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of better to have two so you have one for the raw meat one for vegetables and sides and you just it's just kind of fun everybody right. sits around Different. it and you dip it in it just takes a few seconds sometimes you know but the vegetables um listen to a podcast when you're prepping your meal <laughs> yes. preferably this, this one. one life <laughs> happens laugh anyway <laughs> that's such a good it idea it should be your only podcast no we're kidding but um so podcast is the time it does and then you don't feel like you're all alone slaving away like cinderella yes right so podcast or music we say podcast first but (laughs) um give thanks stop a moment and give thanks to the lord give thanks um for the fact that you you know got the stuff you can make a meal right right um have a theme maybe i like themes yeah have a theme uh, and now this is for actually not prepping, but at dinner time, have a conversation jar. Um, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. And then skipping around, another way to make meal uh, making fun, a progressive dinner. Oh, I've done that before. Yeah, that can be fun. I mean, you can't do it all the time, but that can be fun. Yeah. A progressive dinner in the event that you're not aware of what that is. Let's say that you, we did it on our block one time, not not when I was neighbors right. with you, but pr- mm-hmm. a previous neighborhood, and one house hosted the appetizers, and then a, then we went to the next house. They hosted the main deal or main meal or soup or something. The next house hosted the dessert. You know, so you kind of you just skipped skipped around. Yeah, right. Another thing that Catherine and I do together is we we like to go grocery shopping together. Mm-hmm. We go to the store. Surprise. <laughs> For those of you who know us. <laughs> well, it just makes it more fun. I know. It makes a a boring task less boring. Yeah. And when we go, we we just, obviously, we go our separate ways in the grocery store. We're not attached at the <laughs> hip, literally. <laughs> We're like conjoined twins. <laughs> We're like, we'll meet you at the, <laughs> at the bench on the way out. <laughs> It's it's funny, but even with um, Instacart, we've yeah. we have planned. Oh our... gosh, we do everything. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, we planned our Instacart pickup at the same time, so that we could go. And and one time I goofed up in a. She had I was hers. Say that. She had hers at one store, and I selected the wrong store. So we had to drive across town to go get mine, but. I guess the the bottom line is make it's your life make it fun. 
Yeah. I, I feel that way about my life. Yeah. I feel like my life is fun. I have, my dad used to say that. He used to say, be good, but if you can't be good, have fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, and he meant it. Yeah. He, he really meant it. He enjoyed his life. He did. And he made things fun. Yeah. Yeah. So I would encourage you to make meal planning fun. And part of it is do it with a friend or involve your family. Mm-hmm. Create, you know, the life that you really want to create and eliminate some of the stress. Mm-hmm. We don't have to live under all the stress. No. Yeah. And we have to eat. We do. Yeah. So might as well make it fun, right? Might as well. And easy. Fun and easy. All right. I'm. Oh, I wanted to share one. My recipe, I forgot, when you were sharing your recipe, I was going to share how to make Italian beef. Oh, that's right. So I'm going to share it real quick because yeah. it's so easy. Mm-hmm. Um, you can Google this recipe or search for it online or whatever, but it's crock pot Italian beef. The way that I do it is I take the chunk of the roast out of the freezer and put it in the crock pot. Oh, you do? I do. I oh do not gosh, defrost it. I never it. do that. Here's, yeah, but here's my little trick. Mm-hmm. I do it, I put it in the crock pot before I go to bed. Oh, that's right. You did say that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that way it's cooking all night and it's from frozen on low. And I add the jar of pepperoncini mm-hmm. peppers with the juice, an envelope of dry Italian salad dressing, salad dressing mix, mm-hmm. you know, it can be generic. That's your seasoning on there. I put a couple scoops of garlic, you know, from the jar so or not fresh. not the whole bulb. Not the whole bulb of garlic, oh. no. A <laughs> couple of cloves of garlic. <laughs> yeah. The equivalent of two cloves of garlic, yeah. whether they're fresh whole cloves that you mince or if it's minced garlic that's in a jar and you just do the equivalent of two cloves of garlic, I put that in there. And just comes out beautifully. Maybe a little bit of water if you don't have enough juice from the peppers. But I just made this for our friend who um, had a surgery. And it, it's so easy to do. Mm-hmm. It's easy to do. And then it's easy to, to take somewhere. And it, you just, it cooks all night. And then it just falls apart. And I used a chuck roast. I used a black Angus chuck roast, mm-hmm. a really good quality um, type of beef. It was beautiful. Yeah. I used to think that only sirloins were good, sirloin roasts were good in a crock pot. Like it had to be sirloin. I started to discover, I just kind of, I had to like, you know, compromise at Mm -hmm. some point. I threw in, maybe it was an arm roast, a chuck roast. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I can't tell the difference. Although we had this discussion before and we, Mm -hmm. I had it again over the weekend. I was down with my, um, cousins who are in the farm agricultural area and we talked about beef and how the cows get stressed (laughs) and i said can you really tell the difference because what they said is the hormones in um we should put this in our hormone episode when we redo it again because (laughs) we did our hormone episode four times and we may redo it again anyway the 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 cows get stressed when they are what stresses them? Well, I can't remember. Well, if they're it's about like, to be slaughtered and they're under stress, yeah. then it may, it taints the meat. The meat right. tastes weird because right. they were... So, I can't imagine a cow not being stressed when they're about to be slaughtered, but <laughs> somehow they pamper the cows and talk them into, you know, yeah, this is going to be fun. Right. <laughs> we were talking about other ways they're stressed, too. I think just the whole... You well, you know, guys were talking about that this weekend, about can you again, really taste the hormone? Yes. Yeah. And they swear that you can? Absolutely. Hmm. Yeah. They said, and I said, when it's all, you know, flavored with, with spices and cooking for a long time, they, yeah. I believe them mm-hmm. because they know their beef. Right. Well, Catherine, I'm looking at our notes here, and I think we've covered everything that we had planned. I think so. To cover, yeah. except for our scripture. Mm-hmm. So we have a little scripture here, and let's see, where did I put it? Because I, it's Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Let me see if I have it here. Yeah, here it is. Uh, wait, where did it go? Sorry. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 2, That's verse okay. 24. 
Okay, what you say something while I'm well, I it. was going to say one thing I did, I, I just recalled I wanted to talk about mm-hmm. is one of the other things that makes it difficult when you know you're you're um, planning a meal mm-hmm. is when you get a recipe online, and especially if it's on your cell phone. Oh, and it goes away. It goes away. So you have to go ding, hit <laughs> it again. It. And if you have a security code, you have to get back into it. But the other thing is, all you want is the recipe. But you oh, get right. this person's long story about how the recipe's been in their family yeah. for many, many years. It was their grandma's or whatever. And you just, you're scrolling, scrolling and scrolling. looking for the, the meat. And then when you get the recipe... And then you go away to do whatever the instructions say, and you come back, it's boom, gone, gone back to their story again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, that in was the, just a filler while you're, thank you were looking for the Because now, now I have found it again, yeah. Ecclesiastes 2.24. I did have this up on my phone before we started, but then it disappeared. It went away like the recipe. It did. <laughs> well, here's here's the scripture, and this is the, um, which translation should I use here? Okay, this is the New Living Translation, Ecclesiastes 2.24. So I decided there is nothing better than to enjoy food and drink and to find satisfaction in the work. Then I realized that these pleasures are from the hand of God. Mm. I do. I am encouraged by that. Yeah, definitely. God, God wants us to enjoy this life that we have right here. Mm. That scripture really encompasses everything that we just talked about. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. (laughs) Well, thanks again, listeners, for joining us all the way through here. And we would encourage you to subscribe to our podcast. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why do we want them to subscribe, Catherine? We want listeners. Yes, we do. And what does subscribing do? It tells other listeners that, Somehow, yeah, it works where, like, it bumps us up somehow in the... In the universe of however that works. Yeah, we just know to tell people to do it. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I was just speaking for myself. Right. Please subscribe. Because somehow it's better. Yeah, we need listeners that have uh, hit hit the subscribe button. Yeah. And follow us. Yeah. Right? It's the same thing. Oh, of course it is, Tracy. (laughs) (laughs) I told you that before we started. Okay. (laughs) Guess what she's really saying there. (laughs) All right, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.